Hello everyone, it's Amanda. How are you doing? Uh, today is the 28th of October 2019. So we have the Scorpio New Moon. Um, I actually would like to do just a, a read really for the week ahead. Okay, so, but I am just commenting on the fact that we do have the New Moon energies with us today. And I sort of want to say, boy, do we know it. Um, I have already had a phone call from somebody that I know um, who has a situation that, has, that is very much coming to a head today. And uh, I suspect that probably they're not the only person. Uh, lots of different type of situations out there. But um, yeah, things coming to a head, which is often what you, you need really to happen for the birth of the new. So... I am just going to pull some cards for you today and we're just going to see what we're going to get. And I'm going to use my own deck, which is the Archangel Metatron Self Mastery Oracle. And uh, let's just see what guidance Metatron wants to um, say for us all today. OK, let's give them a little shuffle. I was hoping that the sunshine was going to be coming in, uh, illuminating the screen. But alas, no, it looks a bit cloudy out there. The... Uh, I look out onto trees and uh, the tree outside my window, as I'm just shuffling these cards, has gone the most glorious yellow, uh, burnt yellow amber colour over the weekend. It's really gorgeous. So uh, many of us that are experiencing autumn or fall um, enjoy the colours as they change. They're very, very beautiful. Okay. Let's have then some inspiration, please, Metatron, for the week ahead, 28th of October 2019. Where are we at? Thank you for all your love. Thank you for all your support from the last couple of videos that I've made. Um, it's, uh, what do they say? A problem shared is a problem halved. So it feels as though a lot of us have been in the same sort of, uh, ooh, what Metatron is calling energy soup. <laughs> um but let's hope that there's, there's a new burst of energy coming into town, which is going to propel us all forward. So I'm just going to pull three cards and we're going to see what we're going to get. Got two out. Let's just see what the third one is. That one. Ah, OK. We have Archangel Sandalfon wanting to come in and say something. Archangel Sandalfon. As the sunlight starts to come into my room. So the message on this card is Arch Archangel Sandalfon um, with you now. OK, the card says with you now. So I don't know how many of you work with the energy of Archangel Sandalfon or know much about Sandalfon. But as I've said before in other videos, um, Archangel Sandalfon is always present with Metatron as above, so below. And Sandalfon is very good for helping to ground and for us to earth. And that is essential if something new is going to come in. Otherwise, it's just ideas and concepts and energies that can sort of be very floaty, but don't actually make it down into the material world where they need to be uh, planted to manifest. So it's very interesting that Archangel Sandalfon with the 22 master energy is coming in on this uh, new moon in Scorpio to help us to, well, a few things, to not just plant ideas, but I'm feeling as though wanting to look at the card that goes with it. <laughs> OK, it's almost like the card speaks for themselves. Sandalfon, who is this energy which is about grounding, is coming in next to this energy which is linked to Kundalini. Um, and, but as you can see, the depiction within this deck of mine shows this beautiful beam of light that is coming into the body and is wanting to ignite all of the different chakra points within our body of which there are more than seven. So we have out of body chakras. We also have um, chakra points that are beneath the feet. OK, so with the Metatron system, it's from uh, Stellar Gateway down to Earth Star. Um, but I'm also being told that there's a lot of activation of uh, energy in the palm chakras 
um, at this moment in time. So that seems to be an activation for all of us to be able to do deeper self-healing on ourself. So absolutely, we've got this beautiful light coming into the physical body that needs to be grounded. And Sandalphon is the energy that's wanting to help us with that process. And the third card that came out was the card of the moon. OK, so if we look at these three together, they say a very clear story to me. OK, ground in the light and the new vibrations to your physical body that are coming in with this new moon. You'll also notice on these cards that the representation of the physical people are they're both sitting, they're sitting, they're still, they're present. They're not running around all over the place. Uh, they are having to stay still for this grounding process to happen. I know of quite a few people at the moment who are having problems with their feet OK, uh, I know one lady who's just, you know, really uh, hurt her foot and uh, the plantar fasciitis in underneath the foot. So um, healing energy sent out to her. Um, but I'm hearing from a few people that feet seem to be playing up in some shape or form. And it, it sort of made me laugh because I realised that I've just bought myself a pair of shoes um, because I have flat feet. I don't have any arches. My feet are very, very flat. And um, it's a bane of my life uh, because if you walk any distance, you get like a friction burn on, on the bottom of your feet. It's very, very painful. So I've had to buy some uh, walking shoes with an arch in them. It's like an inbuilt arch. I'll give a shout out now to Vionix. The brand is Vionix. V for victory. <laughs> And actually, they're quite comfortable. Um, not the sexiest pair of shoes in the world, has to be said, but, you know, uh, needs must. They're going to be good for walking. But it, it, it felt quite symbolic as I purchased them. I thought, no, come on, I've, I, I need some more support here for my feet. You know, what are the feet? The feet are the things that carry you through life. Um, we've been talking about foundations and building on strong foundations brick by brick. You know, we need good footwear, basically. So um, there seems to be something about the feet as well. Of course, there's something about the feet. Archangel Sandalphon's here. OK, Sandalphon. OK, Sandal. <laughs> Archangel Sandalphon rules the Earth Star Chakra, which is beneath our feet, linked into Mother Earth. But equally, Sandalphon is all about the feet. OK, so um, let's let's just ask about that, shall we? Let's grab the Sandalphon spray. Look, look, I'm actually wearing his colours. How cool is this? I'm realising now. Didn't even know I was going to definitely make a video today. I know I'm always saying that, but it's all a bit ad hoc. Um, I'm wearing his colours. How well, that's great, isn't it? Look at that. Okay. Beautiful pink, nourishing pink. Okay, let's spray Sandalphon. Bronze Earth Star Energy. Let's see what, meth what what Sandalphon has to say. And maybe just for a moment, connect into your lower body, connect into the base chakra, and then also connect into um, your hips, connect into your, um, your legs, your thighs, your knees, your shins, your ankles, your feet your toes, the soles of your feet. Can you feel how sensitive the energy in the feet is? Um, really become aware of the energy in your feet and what it's doing. Um, my feet right now, as I'm connecting in, feel very alive is the only way to put it. It's like they're tingling. I've got like this tingling energy in my feet. Um, so let's just now go down below the feet to the Earth Star Chakra, which is about a foot or so beneath the foot, and just connect into that deep place as well, that chakra that is um, part of your anchoring into Mother Earth. And let's just connect into Sandalphon. Sandal 
what do you wish to say to us this week? This week of all weeks, it is important to tread carefully. He's actually giving me the analogy of a field that is filled with potential mines. These are symbolic mines. They're not actual mines, land mines I'm talking. Of course, there are parts of the world where these terrible weapons are still in existence, although uh, there's a lot of work that's been done to clear them, but they still exist in our world. But it's as though we're walking into a week where there potentially are um, these energetic landmines that if we're not careful, we can walk into. So he's saying the trick is to be very aware of your feet and where you are walking, how you are walking and why you are walking. So what he means by this is that whatever scenario you've got going on in your life now, Whatever is going on in your life, it's as though there are a number of pitfalls um, and triggers that if we're not careful, we can easily walk into. So this message is coming through to prevent that from happening. He wants me to stress that nobody is in physical danger this is more navigating through difficult, challenging energy and that we have a choice whether we want to effectively walk into the firing line or whether we choose to walk with feet of peace. There is that passage that he's reminding me of, which I've talked about before, the spiritual armour of God. And the spiritual armour of God, one part of it, is that we walk with feet that, are, uh, that have the energy of peace. And so therefore, if we walk with our feet as agents of peace, is what he's saying, we can we know where not to walk into. He's saying at the moment, there are a number of um, people, situations and energies uh, who don't want to listen, who are very entrenched in their own dysfunction and behaviour and negativity and toxicity. And he's saying it's better for you to be able to, it's not about walking past, but it's about not walking into. So he's giving the analogy of, say you've got somebody in your life who you know is um, difficult and argumentative, okay? Um, it isn't necessarily that you don't, you know, you bypass them completely this week. It's more that you don't go into maybe subject matters or areas which you know is going to trigger them. And then you're going to get the argument, okay? Then you're going to get the flare up. It's more about just being present with them, with your feet of peace, with the energy of peace through your body, and trying to just hold that as much as you can. Um, really, it's the message of not being triggered, working on not being triggered, um, by other people's responses and other people's energy that is not in alignment or to your own. So it's as though there is this landscape of this week where there are patches of more peaceful, harmonious, balanced energy. Um, and you need to work, you need to find that rather than deliberately taking yourself into almost like a hot spot arena. 
And I do feel this also links into at a time where tensions are very high, stepping back from having to always maybe, you know, say our pennies worth about something, um, wade in to say something, because I'm very clearly being shown people aren't, a lot of people aren't listening anyway. So it's more about just holding the vibration of peace, which we keep repetitively being told. And Sandalphon is saying this is now, now, now as well. And navigating through this week, which feels as though potentially there are these sort of landmine type energies which can go off. Um, but you don't have to walk into them. OK, um, so I guess discernment comes in. It's about learning from our past mistakes do you, will you keep putting yourself back into a position or back into a situation or back into a behavior that you know ultimately is going to blow up in your face? Let's look at behaviors, for example. Are you going to do something where you know the next day you're going to wake up and you're going to regret it? Um, and that could be something you've eaten, something you've drunk, something you've done. You know, it's almost like, and also something that I keep being also drawn to the mouth. Um, it's interesting, actually, because Sandalphon has got a bit of a sense of humour, a little bit like Metatron has. And today he's wanting to lighten it because he's talking about foot and mouth disease. Uh, now, foot and mouth disease is a very unpleasant um, disease, uh, which I believe is in uh, is cattle, isn't it, that get foot and mouth disease. Um, but he's using this just as an analogy that as human beings, it's almost as though um, we can we can have not the physical illness, but it's like foot and mouth disease. It's like we we wade into things, you know, we our feet, we, we wade into things where actually our attention isn't really needed. you know. And also we can say things which it's almost like the mouth, you know, it's like words running away with us. Um, do you, it's almost like, do you really need to say that? Being very mindful of what you say, being very mindful of what you say. Is it coming from the right place? If it's not coming from the right place, trying to just count to 10 and hold it in, not hold it in in terms of a toxic way, because then it's like the volcano, volcano that has to blow, but trying to find a way through these energies, okay? Whether it's journaling it, whether it's writing it down, whether it's going out and getting that frustration that you want to maybe spew at somebody else, getting out of the body in another more productive, functional way that doesn't hurt anybody. It is back to sort of working on our own stuff. It's, it's almost as though he's saying as a species, it's almost like a, a lot of people have got foot and mouth disease at the moment. They're, they're just wanting to wade into every single argument, every single um, conflict, every single piece of tension. And then the mouth starts going as well. And then before we know it, we've got a whole world who are just becoming sort of um, deaf, dumb and blind. OK, so it's like for light workers this week to just really hold the energy of peace. I'm feeling that very, very strongly. Of course, that could be said for every week, but it feels as though this week particularly is very, very important. We have got this new moon in Scorpio. We've got a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of tension bubbling beneath the surface. As I said, lots of things coming up to, you know, like critical point. Um, so I'm hearing the words moderation, balance, harmony, I'm hearing the word sobriety, um, but not from a place of sort of um, sackcloth and ashes, you know, going back to a time where, you know, we're not allowed any pleasure at all. But it just does feel as though it's it's a week to. Um, it's a reserve, it's a week where we're being asked to be more reserved, um, to be more contained to work with what is within us and hold at the highest energy of uh, harmony that we can. And I think we're being told to do that because it's almost as though we're going to be seeing the opposite of that out there in society. Last night when I went to bed, I mean, I live in a very peaceful part of the UK, um, very blessed to live in a very beautiful part of the UK, very peaceful part of the UK. Of course, it has troubles like any anywhere else in the world, but it is basically a very safe, harmonious place to live. But, you know, last night I went to bed and it was like there was um, 
it sounded like the I guess it was boy races or something like that it was like a, a mo motorbikes or cars and they were going up and down not my road but a road I guess quite near me uh, very loud I thought what the hell is going on and then this morning uh, my husband came back from the park and he said people were talking there'd been seven police cars just down at the park and I just thought yeah it sort of sums up the energy it's just like crazy crazy out there so um, don't add to it, is I feel what Metatron is saying. Um, he's also saying it's because a lot of people... OK, let me just show you this card again, this card of Kundalini, OK? I'm sort of... Although this is the card of Kundalini, I'm wanting to talk about this more in a wider sense in terms of just light vibrations coming in. Because what I'm feeling is that these light codes that are coming in, they're coming in for everybody, OK? And the problem is it is a problem actually, is that some of these light codes are hitting people who are unawake and who are not understanding how to deal with it. They're not, they're not getting how to deal with it. And so therefore, uh, Spirit is, uh, and Sandalfon are asking us to be the ones that lead by example, to show, um, to, to, to lead the way basically to be the to, to be the leader to show the way in terms of our energy um i'm just getting a, a, a i keep coming back to the story that i heard this morning and I, I just know a lot of people out there at the moment who are unawake um are really struggling with these intense energies and emotions that are coming up i mean let's be honest any full moon any new moon any police officer in the country will tell you that people play up people go you know um um a little bit insane even you know um levels of insanity uh increase around uh full moon and new moon phases but on top of this scorpio moon we've also got um we've just got this implosion of light that's coming into our planet. Um, I talked about the Schumann resonance in my last video. <clears throat> I believe that over the last 24 hours, it started to pulse a little bit stronger. Well, that pulse is going to get stronger and stronger. So we're going to go from a place of where it's been quite dormant and flat to suddenly it's like flick of a switch and it's like, hey, we're back again. So, um, you know, it is all about balance. Let's see. Let's pull another three cards now. Uh, <clears throat> Kundalini as well, before I pull the other three cards, Kundalini is my last video. I was talking about soul weariness and I was talking about the fact a lot of us were feeling quite tired. Um, and remember that sometimes what we do is we look for energy outside of ourself when we're feeling weary or we're feeling tired, whether it's at soul level, physical level, emotional level, whatever. Um, what this is reminding you of is that you have the energy within you and it is like that burning furnace within the base chakra. But again, I talked last video, you need to be looking after the base chakra at the moment. You've got to be feeding the furnace. You've got to be feeding the furnace. Um, so this is a time of sitting, meditating, connecting with colour, connecting with light, connecting with your guides connecting with your whole chakra system from head to toe, top to bottom, and just pulling down the light as much as you can. And just literally imagining that is, is, do you know what I'm being shown is almost like there's this beautiful sparkling firework that is being set off inside of ourselves. And um, I wonder what is your favorite firework? I always used to love the Catherine wheels, you know, which really spun. And to me, I'm just imagining now, uh, a Catherine wheel inside my solar plexus, sparking off all this gold and orange light, which might be what I need at the moment. Maybe you could think of um, another uh, firework. I'm being given fireworks as an analogy. I mean, the rocket. I mean, you know, this is a bit like a rocket energy as well. What do rockets do? It's like, <laughs> um, but it's it's sparky. It's light. It's illuminating. When do light, when do fireworks coming out come out? They come out in the dark. They come out when times are difficult. So it's almost like setting off our own inner fireworks. I'm being serious here, okay? Um, and maybe using that if you find it helpful as uh, something to work with in meditation. Imagine a beautiful Catherine wheel made up of the most amazing, beautiful pink colours um, in your heart. You know, so. 
Roman candle, what other, what other fireworks are there? I don't know, you can put them in the comments below. We can have a bit of fun because you do need to also be, you know, it's like light, we all need to lighten up a bit as well. Um, it's been very heavy, it still is heavy. So it's like as much light as we can get as possible is important. Um, I know animals don't particularly like fireworks and um, my my dog, she's a little bit hit and miss with them. I certainly wouldn't leave her on her own on fireworks night, which is November the 5th here in the UK. We let off our fireworks in celebration of Guy Fawkes and all of that. Um, but you, you can get silent. You can get silent fireworks these days at the end of the day, um, which, you know, if you go to that type of display or you have some in your garden, uh, they're very beautiful. You know, it's like anything. There's a, there's a positive side and there's a negative side. There's also a negative side in terms of the environment. I understand that. But at the end of the day, um, I actually love seeing the sky lit up with colour if it's done safely, whether it's the northern lights, which would be the best way. But we don't get it down here in Bournemouth. We don't get the northern lights. Um, so for us, you know, something like fireworks in the sky when it's really beautiful and lit up is magical. Think about New Year's Eve, you know, and all those amazing displays you see in, uh, well, in the UK, obviously we see Sydney's first, that comes in first. And then obviously, uh, I can't remember what follows after that, but, um, you know, it's all around the world. It's like the whole sky's lit up with colour. I just think it's very beautiful. So... OK, let's pull three more cards now. So week ahead, any other guidance? Sandalphon as well. Archangel Sandalphon has a, such a gentle energy um, and is also very good for helping you with any issues you've got going on with regard to your physical body, whether that's feeling um, unwell, whether you're just feeling tired, anything. Sandalphon's great to call in for healing linked into your physical body. OK, three more cards for this week. White light. Two more cards. Letting go. Bottom of the pack, we've got this one, which is the chakra light body. Okay. And if you look at this card now, which is the, yes, please, Kundalini. Sorry, it's my husband. Is that the wife wants a coffee, would like a coffee as well? Yes, please. Okay. I'm just videoing. Okay. You're on video. Do you want to come say hello to people as you, they can see you now? This is my husband, John. You hello, need to put your, put your head down. Where's well, this on YouTube? It will be, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Am I famous now? You're famous. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a coffee? Okay. Right. That's completely thrown me now. What was I going on about? Um, <laughs> um, right, okay, here we go. Chakra light body and also the Kundalini, okay? So in many ways, it's saying the same thing. I mean, in fact, what's lovely about this is can you see that the colours here are within the body, okay? And here we've got them outside the body. So it's almost sort of like the inner world and the outer world. There's no escaping this beautiful flow of colour that is both within and around us at this time. Uh, I actually feel that those two cards themselves just feel gloriously healing. Aren't they gorgeous? Okay, let's show you now the other three cards anyway that we got here. Um, I got the card of white light, which is to do with purity and innocence the card of letting go and the card of love, okay? White light, letting go and love. Um, so let's talk about the white light firstly. Oh, do you know, it's almost as though the whole world needs to be bathed in white light right now. Um, a, return to, a return to innocence, got that song going on again, a return to innocence by Enigma. Uh, I think I'll play that after I've made this video. White light, purity and innocence. It's though we all need to be bathed in white light. And of course, what does the what is the moon? The moon is when we are bathed in white light, nature's light, nature's white light. Um, white light is also linked to helping to return us almost like to a zero point, to a zero point. And the card that comes next to it is the card of letting go. And the truth is that when you genuinely let something go, 
in your life, you often then experience a period where it's almost like a bit void-like. You've let something go, but yet the thing that is then meant to come in to replace it isn't yet here. Um, whether that be the new behaviour, the new relationship, the new job, the new situation, whatever it is, the new start hasn't yet quite happened. There's that glorious phase between when you let something go and then when the new is about to come in, and we call it transition. But in terms of a colour, it, it isn't just white, actually. It feels like it's black and white. It needs to be made up of both energies. Um, so I feel as though these cards are just really helping to illustrate where we are right now um, in our lives. It is time for release. Um, and it is also a time to return to these energies of purity, of innocence and of love. Back to what Sandalfon was saying at the beginning of this um, session, that in a week whereby there seems to be a lot that can potentially uh, trip us up if we're not careful, just because of the tricky energies that are out there, um, if you can hold on to the energy of peace, you can hold on to the energy of love and you can surround yourself with white light. It feels as though they um, they help to help you navigate through the difficulties of the week ahead. And remember, it's very, very important that we all remember that what is white light? White light basically is it contains these colours. White light contains all the colours of the rainbow. Um, white light refracts them all so in a way what a beautiful thing to think of I've never really thought of this before but standing out underneath a powerful moon when you're when when you are bathed in the moon's white light and the world is bathed in the white in the, in the white light imagine that white light actually sort of like actually what it's doing is it's really sprinkling all of the colors as well onto our world um so I I like that um yeah, look at the card that's on the bottom of the deck now. Transformation, dark to light. That's where we're at. That's exactly where we're at. If you've been watching my videos, the last couple of videos in particular, it's very much a time of looking at our shadow. I've said this, looking at our shadow, concentrating also on the light that's coming in. Um... Okay, let's just spray the white light. Okay, white light. And just imagine that white light flowing down around you and through you. Imagining a white light flowing through you and around you. Note here, it starts off as white light and then it just becomes all of the colours of the rainbow. Okay. What's interesting here, I'm just almost like noticing these cards anew, is that the way that Jane's painted them is that actually, can you look, it's perfect. The white light here becomes all the colours of the rainbow and here we've got the white all of the chakras are depicted in white, but yet the colours are all around. So it's as though if you can just hold white light in all of the chakras, what happens is colour is an intelligent energy. They will vibrate out and become whatever you need them to be at different parts and different places within the aura. There's something in these two cards. I mean, to me, the message is very clear that this is a, this is a month, this, oh, okay. This is a month. All right. I was thinking, I was just talking about this week. This is a month where we really need to be working with colours, guys. So it's going to be a great month because I love working with colour. Can't get enough of it. Whether you're working with colour through literally choosing consciously what colours to put on, they have an impact on how you feel. Um... Maybe you are thinking about changing the colours in your home. That has a huge impact on your mental health, emotional health and physical health, the colours that you have around you. Whether it's linked into working with colours in terms of crystals, whether it's linked into working with them with sprays, 
whether it's linked into working with colour through visualisation and meditation. Um, but it's becoming very conscious of colour. Uh, Metatron's also saying to me, it feels as though the upgrade that's here, it's almost, you know, I've been talking a lot about the, um, he's been given the analogy of, it's almost like a radio station that's being tuned up to a different frequency. Now what he's saying to me, it's almost as though, back to the eyes again, it's as though we're going to be going from a black and white world to a full multicolour world. Well, I know we all can see colour anyway, but it's just an analogy. It's that big a jump. I mean, I'm bloody old enough to remember black and white TV. I can't, you know, I mean, that makes me feel so ancient. My children are like, what? You used to watch black and white? You know, how old are you? But actually, it's not that long ago. It's not that long ago. It's 40 years ago, basically. You know, or maybe a little bit more than that. Not much more than that. You know, it's my childhood, black and white TVs. Now, where are we at? We're at colour TVs. We're at high definition TVs. We are at TVs which are just, I don't even understand what they are, but they just look amazing. Have you have, have you been into a new TV shop recently and seen the, I'm not saying go and buy them because I think they're ridiculously expensive, but those really expensive TVs, I guess it's, um, is it? LED, I don't know what it is. It, it's just it's, it's just a whole new level of colour. It's it's oh it's it's I mean it's beautiful. They they the pictures look stunning. They're so clear, and it's you know the colour world is just um, we're just opening up to more and more colour, more and more depth, more and more intensity. And what does that mean? Colours all have an impact on us. They, um, they affect our mood, they, um, they can heal us, they can support us, they can inspire us. It just feels like there's going to be so much more colour coming into our world. But I'm also being told, well no, it's not sad, I was going to say it's sad, it's not really sad because everyone has their choice where they want to stay, but I'm being shown very clearly the difference between a 3D world and a 5D world. And it's literally like those that are choosing and they are choosing to stay in a 3D world. It's like it's really like black and white. It's like a black and white vibration. And those of us that are accepting the upgrades that are here rolling into November and 2020, it's like we're being given the full colour option. OK, and um, extra sensory as well, Metatron saying. So again, to use the analogy of the TV, it's not just that the colours are becoming brighter, it's also that it's like, it's not just surround sound, it's whatever the, whatever comes after surround sound, you know? So all of our senses are being very, very um, finely tuned. So it's a very interesting mix what's going on at the moment because we are on one hand being asked to tread very carefully, be quite moderate, quite, we have that word sobriety coming through in terms of how we carry ourselves, But at the same time, the world around us um, is becoming more colourful, okay, more colourful, uh, more vibrations that are coming in. And we're, we, we are, the thing about it is that you have to ground them. You have to ground them. And the biggest way to ground them is you've got to be still, which is why so many people are being, um, when I say stopped, it's only a, te it's a pause. It's a temporary pause. You know, back to my, um, this lady that I know that's got the problem with the foot. It's like, I think she's on a six week, um, six weeks, she can't go out of the house. She's just got to rest. And, um, you know, that would be a struggle for me as well, to be honest. But as soon as I heard her say that, I thought, well, I, but I know why that's happening. It's like it's time to integrate. Um, and her story, I'm sure, is repeated up and down the land. All sorts of people who are just being told, no, you've got to pause, you've got to stop. So um, it's good in many ways. OK, um, how many cards have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's perfect actually, because I wanted it really for this week. So it feels as though we've got the seven cards for the seven days, and then we've got the eighth one taking us into next week. And I want the energy I feel that goes into next week as well is the white light. All right. Uh, let's just pull one card actually for Halloween. Should we do that? Uh, let's pull one card for Halloween, which is the 31st, of course. Um, See what vibrations we've got going on on Halloween itself. One card Metatron for Halloween. Oh, that one. Okay. Priorities and building blocks. Okay. I mean, 
Uh, are we getting the message yet? Look, we've got the chakra colours again. To me, this is the chakras, okay? It's a big heads up to the chakras and that we need to be maintaining our chakra health this week. How do you maintain your chakra health? Okay, are you working with all of um, all of all all of the energy that you have within you, or is the stagnancy within one of these energy centers? Maybe it's within your base. Maybe with it, it's within your throat. Maybe it's within your third eye. It's a good week to maybe get a healing, to get a um, a tune up, a check up. But equally, you can self heal yourself as well. You can just lie down. You can put your hands onto your own body. You can ask Metatron to work through your hands and for energy to flow through into each of the chakra points. And if you you know you're confused about which color goes where, just go back to white light. Okay, work with white light. White light will be um, perfectly uh, acceptable to any part in the body. It's safe. There's not, no damage that you can do with white light. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I want to get this uploaded today. And as you can hear, there's a bit of stuff going on around me today. Phone's going. Uh, my kids are off on half term. And um, I've got my cup of tea, which my husband just brought in. So I'm going to drink that. So lots of love to everybody. Have a good week. And um, I'm sure I'll be back up online again very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Remember to call in Sandalphon as well.